good morning everybody welcome to this webinar on creating startups good morning everybody welcome to this webinar on creating startups and accelerating them into unicorns startups and unicorns capture the spirit of the current times the 21st century governments world over are encouraging them glitzy mega events are promoting them and billion dollar valuations are happening investors are loving them media is glamorizing them most importantly youngsters and young at heart are jumping into launching them and and are mostly failing 90% of the startups fail towards the end of the presentation uh, slides i have given the references from which i have taken the data right? this particular thing has been taken from forbes magazine though some startups do accelerate into becoming unicorns with a billion dollar valuation a startup has only a 1.28% chance of becoming a unicorn the current startup scenario is something like this there are over 150 million startups globally about 50 million new startups are launched every year about 137000 startups are added every day on an average even in india government of india is promoting startups in a very big way gujarat happens to be a lead state in the startup policy of the government two consecutive consequent years gujarat has won all india prizes but then why would a sector that has bright talent very accomplished mentors be in there done that you name it and generous funding as we have seen governments governments have come up with lot of schemes have such a high failure rate CB insights analyze about 101 startup failures and found that the top reasons for startup failure were as follows i have taken about nine top reasons the article analyzes as shortlisted about 20 the first and the foremost reason is no market need for the product or the service of the startup so the entire innovation was done startup was launched company was formed or an llp was formed and then it was discovered that there is no market need second reason is they ran out of cash the management of the startups did not know how to manage cash flows third not the right team so the friends got together they were good friends but it could not perform in the pressure of the startups got out competed so you were the first to create an innovation and a startup 
was launched market gave you some traction also but a competitor came along and you were out competed pricing or the cost issue management could not manage the costs or set a price which was not acceptable to the market the product was poor it lacked business model so some cash was generated but ultimately profits were not realized poor marketing and last in this but certainly last last in the article from which i have taken this ignore customers so the founders thought that because they have innovated with something great they will automatically get the market share which does not happen now let us spend some time on this nine reasons which i have shortlisted what does it reflect evidently i mean if you look at the startup scenario and the schemes of the government particularly say government of india government of gujarat what they are promoting is hard innovations so most of the time you have startup founders who are technically very sound technically very sound but can a business run because of technical soundness no market need i mean isn't it very surprising rather hilarious that entire process of new technology development happened without even bothering to know whether the market exists or not so whatever grants that were given and whatever other money seed money which was obtained many times at the expense of shelling out equity was spent without even assessing the market need and after the startup was launched you find that there is no need no there are no takers fine there was a need but you could not manage the cash and how could you i mean you are technically very sound cash management requires a different kind of different set of competencies perhaps some training would have helped you you did put together a team for r&d and innovation but they were not exactly suitable to run a business of startup what could have been done better you were so busy in innovating that you did not keep an eye on the competitors which could have with one simple uh, thing is that they out compete you they get more market share or perhaps they were disrupted you could not manage the cost but you perhaps did not calculate the cost properly there are various techniques including popular one like activity based costing the product was poor you were so much in a hurry to launch that you went to the market with poor quality and subsequent loss of goodwill for for your subsequent new product launches you did everything right you forgot about the fact that a business has to generate profits mind you when investors come in and i presume that most of you when you launch a startup your dream is to make some money if not big money so when investors come in and buy into your startup they are looking at profits in the short and the long run both and you did not have an idea about business model of course the same reasons also reflect on people who have given either grants or seed money because they should have checked before i mean at least caution you before doling out those grants and seed money poor marketing what all is there in marketing apart from development of product i mean somebody could say nobody told us that and because 
and this last uh, the last which i have put is at times an offshoot of success you were able to create an innovation in the stipulated time you got rave reviews so you started ignoring customers the customer calls you with some some issue and you do not attend him and slowly you lose traction right so sherlock holmes would have said elementary my dear watson i would rather say elementary management frameworks so all those nine reasons and if you go to the original article 20 reasons they reflect on management practices lacune in management practices by the startups bright people who come up with innovations which have lot of value were found lacking in management processes either knowledge of management processes or practice of management processes there is a reason to it startups as we have seen earlier is a glamorous thing these days there are glitzy mega events promoting it governments are going gaga over good startups and billion dollar valuations are happening and then everybody there it has led to development of a culture and the culture like in any popular culture in startup ecosystem is rather infectious we have swanky workplaces the youngsters the startup founders and the young at heart also they are on adrenaline and have huge action orientation so you i mean if you if you say that you are going to plan people are going to look down at you that is what you fear or you, or maybe because of that culture of action action orientation you are not even thinking of pausing collecting data and analyzing it to look at whether the demand is going to be there are there any competitors already working on this kind of a problem and if they are not or if they are what is the window of opportunity that you have you come out with an innovation and within 6 months a big competitor comes in and out competes you or a, dip, a disruptive technology comes in and again you are out of business so unfortunately though this bias and pressure for action acts like a drug because every other successful startup that you know in your incubator where some mega deal has happened or in an accelerator if you are dealing with them are action oriented so that gets into your head and you start doing what is euphemistically called business experiments not realizing the fact that this is a very exper- very expensive experiment and the money that you are spending there is coming at the expense of the equity that you are shelling out so many startup founders take to this action orientation at the expense of thorough data driven planning relying at best on brainstorming with their founders of course because they are together 24/7 and whatever they have studied so far perhaps has not acquainted them or trained them into planning a business planning a technology yes they are brilliant but planning a business no this issue gets even more pronounced in startups working towards accelerating into unicorns because of difference in scale of the startup and therefore the unicorn and the velocity 
at which the startup is accelerating into a unicorn. Let us see what is a unicorn. Alan Lee, when uh, this term was coined in, 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 in 2013, unicorn was described as a company worth more than $1 billion valuation but of less than 10 years of standing. As of today, total number of unicorn companies are 465 and total cum cumulative valuation is about $1.3 trillion dollars. Again, uh, the source is CB Insights. The link you will find towards the end of the presentation in the references section. Let us look at some very popular and top unicorns. Now, ByteDance is the alpha unicorn of from China, like alpha male. It has a valuation of 78 billion dollars. It is one of the products it owns is that TikTok. I'm sure many of you might have seen the TikTok videos if not used it. The investors in that include Sequoia Capital China, SoftBank Group, Japan, US private equity investor KKR, Chinese investment from Hill House Capital and corporate venture unit SIG Asia. Now look at what they have done. In two years, ByteDance had more than 1 billion downloads in 150 markets world over and 75 languages rivaling competitors like Netflix, YouTube, Snapchat and Facebook and it is being used actively. TikTok had 500% more revenue. See, that is how it got into that uni unicorn league. 738 million downloads in 2019. TikTok's Q4 revenue was over 300% in January 2020. The 10 biggest unicorns in the world, first as we have seen ByteDance, 75-78 billion dollar of valuation, Uber, 72 billion dollar valuation, 72 billion dollar valuation, Didi Chuxing, 56 billion, WeWork, 47 billion, Joule, 38 billion, Airbnb, 29 billion, Stripe, 23 billion, SpaceX, 19 billion, Epic Games, 15 billion, Grab, 14 billion. India is also not devoid of its own unicorns. Top 5 unicorns of India 197 communication, that is Pay Paytm, 10 billion dollars. Snapdeal, $7 billion. Oyo Rooms, $5 billion. Ola Cabs, $4.3 billion. Renew Power Ventures, $2 billion. How many of you would like to grow your startups into a unicorn? With, say at least $1 billion of valuation, $1 billion. See, this is the difference. And it's a huge difference and it will require cultural shift in terms of the way you manage your operations. Whereas a startup at a bootstrap stage when you are just starting might target a growth rate of 10% per quarter. So you are contended. A startup pursuing a unicorn dream would need a target week over week growth of 15 percent so that is the difference quarter versus week now see startup and unicorn the difference is that an investor has shown interest and he is willing to give you that kind of valuation so it is not you alone perceptions of the of the of the investor matters a lot so the funding of unicorn in the making is done on the base of valuation assuming that such an aggressive growth week over week 15 percent that aggressive growth plan would be successfully ex executed so startup founders have given their projections 
they have found an investor who has that kind of deep money and that founder, that investor or group of investors has confidence that this management team of the startup founders will have in a, enough management acumen to capture the market share which is being projected in the given time frame. So it talks a lot about not only your technical prowess but also your managerial skills. Needless to say that the plan must be impeccable. I mean many of you would have seen uh, those uh, serials where uh, I think it's that uh, you go up the elevator and that elevator pitch and then you pitch before the set of investors. Needless to say that the plan must be impeccable and the supporting spreadsheets exhaustively, exhaustively thorough. Now let us say, let us see what, what Bill Gates talks about unicorns in FD business. Do you think the unicorns are going to continue to decrease in value? I'm sure there's some sorting out that's taking place. I mean, it, it never should be the case that closing your eyes and saying, oh, it's a tech company and just throw money at it. Uh, that strategy worked for about two years. Now you actually have to open your eyes and look at the company. And, and you know, if that company's on the way to become another Google, wow, <laughs> you'll look very, very smart. If they're on the way to uh, go where 90% of all T companies, then, then you won't. So the, the need to discriminate is going to be there. I, I would not, uh, you know, if you gave me a basket of unicorns, I wouldn't know right now whether to go long or short. I might go short in the two-year time frame, but not in the longer time frame because all it takes is one or two of those to be, uh, you know, join the pantheon and, and you you your short would would make you go bankrupt so i mean you you heard about what bill gates said it is very clear that even when those uh, investors are making an investment, they are taking a chance and if that investment fails, they will not look very smart. Obviously, when they are taking that decision, they are, look, they are going to look at whether you have that managerial capability to translating that business plan into actual valuation, actual, actual, actual cash flow, actual market share. Many, unfortunately, many founders do not have training into it and therefore they fail. As we have seen, 90% of the startups fail. And along with that, the dreams fail, which is more dangerous. Now, interestingly, a study found that one in four unicorns had at least one MBA founder. A founder who had an MBA background. For what happens is in top management schools, which has a good rejection rate, they not only have talented cohorts, the other students uh, which study with you, they also have in influent, they access into influential networks with deep pockets. But they also have robust research programs into which faculty is engaged, which gleans out required insights that feed into their teaching and consequently their, their teaching is of very high quality, which ultimately helps the startup founders. Let us look at video of what is happening, what happens at
So you saw that there is a high correlation between management schools and successful startups which graduate into becoming unicorns. Now why does this happen? Apart from high quality teaching based on research, top management schools have a range of pedagogical tools to shape their students thinking who want to be startup founders. They have robust theoretical frameworks, they have project work, they have competitions. So you get kind of trained into making such pitches while you are doing the programs itself, the MBA program. And they also have pedagogical tools like case methodology, wherein you get to learn not only from experts but also from your cohorts. Let us look at the video and see what happens at Harvard Business School. What you really want to get to, whether you're pitching a VC, recruiting, or certainly content marketing, is why do you exist? Why does a company exist? A company only exists for one of two reasons. You solve a problem or you fulfill a desire. Startup Bootcamp took a group of first-year students through all the basics they need to understand if they're going to start an early-stage startup, serving the customer, marketing the business, business model. Students were all working on a startup idea themselves. It was an opportunity to sort of pressure test an idea that you had. This is an opportunity to have that hands-on experience, get introduced to the process and get introduced to what it's like to start a company, all the way from concepting an idea to pitching your idea. It gives students a chance to explore entrepreneurship before they go in uh, more deeply and ties in beautifully to the programs we offer the EC year. The advantage of starting in the classroom, there's really a lot to learn about entrepreneurship. Many entrepreneurs jump right to a solution. What we teach in the classroom is that it can't pay to slow down, to really understand that you've found a problem that's worth solving. The nice thing about learning about entrepreneurship in the classroom is it's safe. Experiment, to try ideas, you're not going to let down an investor uh, or lose employees because of a mistake you made. I probably am going to fail a lot. Lot. If I can go somewhere that's going to teach me how other people have failed, I'm three or four steps ahead of where I could have been. The case study method is the quickest way that you could ever be put in a hundred different people's shoes. For the experts that they've brought in, whether it's from a venture capital background or serial entrepreneurs, hearing all of those things in the classroom setting, that's been really helpful. While we were working on our startup idea, I noticed us continually saying, oh, but remember this company did this or this company did that. I saw us kind of drawing on the cases that we had run. The network alone is invaluable and I've seen students really thrive because they've had those connection points when they leave HBS. We know you can teach entrepreneurship. We've been doing it here at Harvard Business School for 60 years. For a lot of the people here, it's sometimes finding that moment or that time to actually be able to do it. This is kind of a risk-free way to figure out if this is something you want to pursue and I think it's, it's increased the entrepreneurial spirit on campus. So they even get to learn from their cohorts. So it is not just the experts who visit them or the teachers. They are the ones guiding them. But their cohorts, the fellow students, that they are equally talented because these are the people who are going to be your competitors. So it will make sense if you listen to their the way they poke holes into your business plans and other things. Right? Let us look at a video again from Harvard. We can actually go ahead and save them 30% of the space. This is a space that's definitely littered with fail attempts. It wasn't until you got to the current model slide that I really understood. Birchbox is entering the very large US beauty market. At least in terms of the numbers of people contributing, I think you could potentially double that. So the winner of the business venture track this year is I think one of the powerful reasons to study traditional business problems in an entrepreneurial setting is simply because it's compelling to walk through the door and read the story and enter the mind of the, of the entrepreneur. Over 
45%, typically 50% of every class for the past 60 years has been engaged in entrepreneurial activities. So there's a rich history of entrepreneurial activity for our graduates. Good morning. Great to see you all. This is our 14th year. We have 83 teams this year, which is a new high watermark for us. Well, good morning. I'm Jason Gerwin, the CEO of Pushpins. So I propose something different. I propose pocket change. Evertrue is going to be the future of how alumni stay connected with their schools and with one another. So today we're presenting a concept called Provenance, which is an independent restaurant concept for the Boston area. And the very high end we have what we call... The HBS business plan competition was instrumental in getting the company founded. It forced us to step through a pretty rigorous process in terms of evaluating an opportunity. You don't consider Thrillist, Groupon, Daily Candy, you don't consider them competition? You know, from what we've heard from coupons.com... I wish that somebody had put me through the ringer on asking these questions so that when, you know, you get asked them, as you said, in your day job, you, you've seen it and heard it before. I, I see this error of trying to be conservative right, in the right. business plan that you're showing to investors, right. but having that bleed through into what you're actually using as your sale pitch. I mean, we got a lot of great feedback from the judges who were all investors in the space and they had portfolio companies also in the space. Well, I've done this now for, the, for three years and every year there's always one or two groups out of the six that I see that uh, you look at and sort of scratch your head and say, wow. It is a smart textile that allows you to monitor health and fitness. The idea is basically uh, classified for the military community. We're doing a Mishi clothing company. It's a high-tech vending machine company. We're selling a service to homeowners to help make their houses more energy efficient. The opportunity to present to a team of really accomplished, experienced people, VCs, private equity firms, entrepreneurs, where else can you have that happen? I think if there's any platform where you have an opportunity to project confidence and to think really, really big, this is it. It's really exciting to see HBS so entrepreneurial because we started a business in 2003 out of HBS and we were one of like seven or eight students and now to see 90 teams is, uh, is really refreshing and exciting. We came up with Birchbox only three months ago. This is how the natural gas industry works. You have a reservoir two miles down over the next 20 years our 65 plus population is gonna double in this country. Introducing Relay Rides, Car Sharing 2.0. This year we were amazed by the variety of amazing business plans that we saw and that we judged. We had 12 plans. The four that made the finals were spectacular. So our next runner up is the Birchbox team. This process is such a huge learning experience. You're here still in school. It's a great time to leverage this community and to basically tap all of the resources around you and hopefully build an amazing business from that. So the winner is OzComp Systems. This means we're definitely going commercial. This means that we're gonna get a lot of attention from investors, a lot of attention from media. The business plan contest has been a critical part of what we've done. Having the Arthur Rock Center focus on a wide range of educational activities has really accelerated and imprinted the entire business school with this entrepreneurial way of thinking. I feel very lucky to have gone to Harvard Business School. I think it was a great preparation for, for my career as an entrepreneur. We started our business with uh, a team of four, and today we're, we're nearly at 500 employees. HBS really helped round out my thinking about what it, how to manage risk, how to think about being an entrepreneur. By doing 300 cases over the course of two years in all different disciplines, you see a lot of examples. The thing that I learned at Harvard Business School is to ask the right questions. Uh, and to use the right process to find the answers. The Rock Center, uh, the professors that they bring, and the kind of unique way of, of looking at entrepreneurship has helped me in many different facets. I think the big thing about learning entrepreneurship at HBS is that you've got literally 1,800 students on campus and alumni around the world who are actively interested in changing the world. And the most powerful vehicle for changing the world that any of us have discovered so far is the creation of new businesses.
so uh, as we have seen essence of entrepreneurship perhaps is uh, ability to take risks but a smart entrepreneur will try to minimize his risk and management programs have tools and techniques which help a business minimize its risks its risk i'm i'm uh, going to give you two frameworks very broad and general frameworks which perhaps you can use as sort of founders when you are trying to crystallize or plan your startup first i call ivv framework from idea to value to valuation framework for startup creation so the first step is idea generation based on awareness of the startup domain and the appeal of the problem to be solved here yes i am emphasizing on appeal because unless that that problem does not appeal to you you are not going to be in it 24/7 idea filtration after that idea filtration based on appeal of the market to be served is it good enough a market is it growing at the right pace so that you could grow as per your ambitions estimation of the market size now i happen to at times sit on screening committees wherein the grants are being given and we find that many a times or most of the time uh, the startup founders do not have exact figures about estimated market size of the product that they have developed basics but yes it's missing they get enamored with the technical development the technical development is fine you can get a patent for it you can put it on cv if you become a professor incidentally now even in the university sector the focus is on patent converting patents converting into startups development of the value proposition and formulation of the marketing plan market size is fine can it how are you going to generate revenues out of it extract profit out of it after that visualization of the team over a time period over a time horizon say up to your first your initial public offering because that is where the valuation will happen do do you have the right team now which will help you to grow or you will keep bickering or you will have a narrow narrow vision if you don't have the right team projection of the balance sheet over time horizon up to ipo because ultimately investment decisions are hard nose decisions based on a lot of facts and figures so you have to understand how a balance sheet is made you must be able to visualize your balance sheet 5 years from the day you start you may not have that kind of a training thinking in which can shape your thinking now but you can certainly acquire that kind of a training there is a fast track framework for accelerating a startup into a unicorn it begins with the current status in terms of valuation and the underlying drivers of the valuation which are different because startup may not have started even making some money the valuation that you are desiring the required growth rate earlier we saw that 15% week on week strategy for achieving that growth rate it is not easy obviously you know that but how are, how how are you going to convince the investors that you have some strategy in place so that you will be able to achieve that kind of a growth rate therefore a required burn rate of the capital now when you when you are in when you are on a stage where you are giving out equity so that valuation happens what is that acceptable capital structure that you have in mind can you plan it and then yes most importantly the investor hunt because the philosophies of the founders and the investors have to match otherwise there is all, all constant bickering so these are an indicator of kind of 
things you could learn in a management program. Finally, as we come to the end of this webinar, we leave you with IVV and Swag Track frameworks that you would find useful for creating your startup and accelerating it into a unicorn. Now, if this appears to be unglamorous to you, go back, we'll, we're going to leave uh, this presentation and reflect on the implications of what Bill Gates said in the FT interview that you just saw. Mastering the frameworks would certainly call for suffusing the action orientation, the bias for action with reading orientation. And let me assure you, rather wout, that your effort will not go, will go a long way in increasing the odds of creating a successful startup and accelerating it into a unicorn. If doing this all by yourself appears to be daunting, approach any management school offering such a program or even customized program. The flexi structure of such a program and the peer group pressure in the cohorts that you have <coughs> would firmly push you towards achieving your goal successfully. <coughs> Thank you for your time. RK University will be happy to offer you a program on creating startups and accelerating them into unicorns. Email your queries to cfe at the rate rku.ac.in. <coughs> your questions. So I have a few questions, I'll pick some of them and then see if uh, it can be answered. Now there's somebody who says I want to introduce a local drink, a coconut drink. It is locally available and very good for our body also and in present status India needs immunity drink and coconut is one of them. I have land to open the company, I have labor to do the work, I have raw material in the coconut water, lakhs of coconuts are there. What are the other needs? Yeah. Now, if I don't know your background, as I said, either approach a business school, a management school and enroll in a program, even if it's a small three months or six months customized program, who, who then will introduce you to various frameworks which you, you can use in planning. I think I mean, since you have asked this question, I'll try and answer it in a different way. You refer to a good book on marketing, say uh, Marketing Management by Philip Kotler. Also you uh, read this Project Management by Prasanna Chandra. I think these two books should see you through with most of the questions. The way ahead lies in local, local manufacturing, local markets, local supply chain. Local is not merely a need, but a responsibility. But there is no question here. Okay. Do you really think a 15% growth rate is realistically possible? Now, no, you will not require an Ivy lead. Like he's, he's asking whether 15% growth rate is possible by somebody who has not attended an Ivy lead. Ivy League school. Now growth rate has nothing to do with the school that you have attended. Now 15% figure was quoted by somebody who has seen such a thing happen. And as long as you can give that confidence that you can achieve 15% growth rate week on week, somebody might be willing to Invest in you and thereby your valuation might go up. But there is no correlation between Ivy League or any growth rate. You can fail also after having attended any of the top schools. So that was about it. I have to open, I have, yeah, I have answered this, that you will have to refer uh, Mr. 
as far as the coconut drink is concerned, I have recommended two books. But I strongly recommend that from wherever you are, find out a good management school and see if they have a customized program for startups. It could be one year long program, it could be a three month program, it could be a six month program. And you undertake that because it will it will give you hands-on experience of preparing such project reports also. So thank you very much. For now, if you have any queries, if you are interested in any such program, RK University will be happy to design such a program for you. So please remember our uh, email ID cfe at the rate rku.ac.in. One more question is there. Yes, what is it? Yeah, this was answered. Since it's same about coconut water, right? Yeah. Thank you very much. Wish you all the best.